Breakfast is ready. Have you finished shaving, Victor? Not yet. Shan't be long. Do you want any cornflakes? No, I don't think so, Mildred. Not this morning. I bet he'll change his mind just as I'm sitting down. All right, I will have some. I knew it. Any cream? Well, there's the top of the milk. Oh, it's all right. I'll answer it. It's probably Mary about tonight. Hello? Oh, could I speak to Inspector Wade, please? Inspector? You mean Superintendent? Oh, I beg your pardon. Superintendent. Who is it speaking? My name's Charles Melford. I'm an old friend of Inspe uh, Superintendent Wade's. Uh, hold on a moment. There's a man called Melford on the phone. He says he's an old friend of yours. Melford? Charles Melford? Yes. Well, I'm blowed. Old Charles. I thought he was in America. Well, he's not. He's on the phone, and he still seems to think you're pounding a beat by the sound of it. Here, give me the phone, darling. Charles? Hello, Victor. How's tricks? Well, I'm blowed. Charles Melford. What brings you over here? How are you? Fine, just fine. I'm over here on holiday for two or three weeks. I flew over from the States last Tuesday. Oh, I see. I thought we might get together, Victor, and talk over old times. Yes, I'd like to very much. Well, what about tonight? Can you have dinner with me? Um, uh, well, uh, j just a minute. Mildred, is it tonight you're going over to your sister's? It is. Okay, tonight, Charles. Oh, that's great. Shall we say the old cafe regent about eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. See you then. Well, that was certainly a surprise. Charles Melford, of all people. Is that the Melford who was with you in C Division and went into the furniture business in America? That's the chap. He left the force just before I met you. Why? Oh, he was fed up with post-war conditions, emigrated. Wisest thing he ever did, if you ask me. Wish to heaven I'd done it. What do you know about furniture? Well, what did he know about it when he first started? Where's the toast? Oh, Lord, it's still All under right, the All right, I'll get it. <laughs> yes, but why furniture, Charles? Why go into the furniture business? Well, I wanted to start from scratch. So I figured the best thing to do was to go into something I knew nothing at all about. I certainly knew nothing about furniture. <laughs> it seems to have worked out. Sure, it's worked out all right. But say, we're talking about me the whole time. What about you, Victor? How long have you been a superintendent? About 12 months. Were you surprised when they promoted you? Well, I should have been surprised if they hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing. If ever I get a bad dream, it's never about furniture or income tax or women or anything like that. It's always about one of the old cases. Yes, I know. It's the old story. You're worried because you sent an innocent man to the death cell. No, it's the other way around, I guess. What do you mean? Victor, do you remember the Greenfield case? Greenfield? Oh, that was the wealthy old boy who was murdered at Melton Common. Yes. About, um, oh, must be over ten years ago. Nearer twelve. He was clubbed to death and his body was dumped in a pond on Melton Common. That's right, and we never got the person who did it. No. But uh, wasn't that writer chap involved? What was his name? Leighton, Felix Leighton. He was the dead man's nephew and also his heir. That's right, Felix Leighton. I remember he used to have four or five books a year published, full of the usual inaccuracies. He hasn't published a single book since the murder. He hasn't needed to, of course. Have you been checking up on Felix Leighton? Oh, sort of. How do you mean? I had a curious experience about six months back. Since then, I've been making a few inquiries. What do you mean, a curious experience? Well, I'll tell you about that presently. But first of all, let me refresh your memory of what actually happened. You mean at the time of the murder? No, before the murder took place. Go on, Charles. Well, seven or eight months before Lester Greenfield was murdered, I was attached to the CID at Melton Common. I used to meet Felix Layton, who was then making a name for himself as a crime novelist, in a small pub near the police station. He used to pick my brains about Scotland Yard, police routine, you know, that sort of thing. No, I suppose he made as much in a month as you did in a year. Uh, yeah, but I suppose in a way I was rather flattered that he paid any attention to me. Anyhow, one night when I was trying to relax after a particularly hectic day, my telephone rang. It was the desk sergeant at the local station. He said that Felix Layton was at the station. He was extremely upset and insisted on seeing me personally. Uh, 
Oh, there you are, Inspector. I'm quite glad to see you. Well, what's going on? Well, it's like I told you over the phone, sir. Mr. Layton insists on seeing you personally. He seems to be in a rare old state, sir. Well, didn't he say what the trouble was? No, he wouldn't talk to me, sir. All right, Sergeant. I'll have a word with him. Uh, wish he'd chosen a more convenient time. Yeah, they never do, sir. Oh, Melford. Oh, thank God you're here. I'll take it easy, Mr. Layton. Take it easy. Can I get you anything? Get me anything? I know what makes you think I'm... Melford, I, I'm sorry to drag you out at this time of night. Oh, that's all right. So I, I, I couldn't talk to the people out there. I just couldn't. You wish to talk to me off the record, sir? No, no, not at all. I, I want to make a statement. Oh, go on, sir. I've, I've killed a man. Killed a man? You, you mean with your car? No, no, I've shot my wife's lover. Just a minute, sir. There's not just a minute about it, Inspector. I've shot my wife's lover. Who was this man, sir? His name is Derek Gage. Derek Gage? He, he, he owns an antique shop in Chelsea. Can you tell me exactly what happened, Mr. Layton? Yes, yes, of course. I, I came home and found my wife and this fellow Gage in the drawing room. They were not playing canasta, Inspector. Go on, sir. I took a revolver out of the bureau and shot him. And for God's sake, don't ask me if I had a license for the revolver. What happened after you shot this man? Well, my wife fainted, and I rushed out of the house and came straight here. Are you quite sure he's dead, sir? Well, I pumped a couple of bullets into his head. I imagine he's dead, Inspector. I see. Now, I suppose you want me to sign a statement? Uh, not just yet, Mr. Layton. You don't believe me? Well, I, I think I should like to see your wife first, sir. I'm not interested in my wife anymore. Yes, I can understand that, sir. And nevertheless, I'd like to see her. Uh, oh, very well, since you insist. Is that your car outside, Mr. Layton? Yes, it is. Why? I should like you to drive me up to your house. Well, can't we go in a police car? Well, I think it would be uh, less conspicuous if we went in yours. Now, which room did you say? Uh, the drawing room. Second door along on the right. Oh, all right. I'll go in first. If, if, if you don't mind, I'll wait here. Is there a light switch? Yeah, I left the lights on. Now, stay where you are. The, the, the body's over by the window. Well, there's no one in here, Mr. Layton. What? Oh, come along in. But I don't understand, Inspector. The room doesn't appear to have been disturbed. There's no sign of blood. But I tell you, I shot him. I shot him, Inspector. A, a, a man called Gage. Derek Gage. And... Antique dealer from Chelsea. I think it was Chelsea. I'm not quite and sure. What did you do with the revolver, sir? I, I don't remember. I, I think I threw it away. Threw it away? It's, it's, it's all a little confusing. Yes, Mr. Layton, very confusing. Are you sure this is the room? Yes, yes, of course. There's no question of that. I, I took the gun out of the bureau over there. Felix? Felix, where are you? That's my wife, Inspector. Felix, where on earth have you been? Oh. I'm sorry. I am Detective Inspector Melford, Mrs. Layton. Your husband came into the station about an hour ago. He was very upset. Have you had another of those turns? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, dear. I suppose I must have done, but I, I could have oh, sworn... You'd better lie down, dear. I'll get you one of your tablets. I'm sorry, Inspector. I, I feel confused. I, I could have sworn... This man, Gage, I, I, I saw him here, I'm sure. I think I'd do what Mrs. Layton suggests, sir, and lie down. Yes. Yes, perhaps. Yes, I'd, I'd better, Inspector. Here we are, Felix. Now, drink this. Oh, thank you, Carol. <laughs> Carol, I'm sorry. I thought you... Oh, my God, I've been so confused. I thought... I thought you'd be... Don't talk, Felix, my dear. <laughs> Come and lie down on the sofa. I should do the job properly, sir. Put your feet up. Oh, that's better. That's better. Oh, I'm sorry to give you all this trouble, Inspector. It's overwork, you know. Overwork. Yes. Uh, Will he be all right? He'll probably come round in about an hour or so, and then won't remember anything. I had a feeling he wasn't normal. He's been in London all day. Didn't get back for dinner. He's had one or two of these turns just lately. He's been working so very hard on a new novel. Yes. Where did you find him, Inspector? Oh, well, we didn't. He called at the station. He told me that he killed a man. What? A man called Derek Gage. Derek Gage? Yes. Do you know this man? 
What did Felix say about Derek Gage? Well, he said that he was an antique dealer in Chelsea. That you were in love with him and he caught the two of you together and he shot Gage here in this room. Oh, how awful. It isn't true. Of course not. But do you know Mr. Gage? Well, only as a name. You mean you don't know him personally? There isn't any such person. There is... Well, Mrs. Leighton, I'm sorry, but I find this a little confusing. Derek Gage is the name of an antique dealer in my husband's latest novel. He's found shot dead in a railway compartment. Oh. Oh. Well, could I see this novel? It won't be published for some time, but we've got the proofs. I, I was reading through them this evening. Well, I'd like to see them, Mrs. Leighton. Yes, of course. They're in the bureau here. He's asleep. Oh, good. Oh, here we are, Inspector. Here are the proofs. Oh, thank you. I think the character of Gage is introduced about about page 27. Uh, oh, yes. Ah, oh, there we are. Yes. Derek Gage was a neat, fastidious-looking man in the late 30s. His small but rather exclusive shop on the King's Road. <sighs> well, this takes quite a weight off my mind, Mrs. Layton. <sighs> Uh, thank you, ma'am. I'm sorry you've had all this trouble. Oh, I'm glad it was cleared up so easily. Though I'm afraid you've got a real problem here. Yes. I think you should persuade your husband to see a good doctor, Mrs. Lee. Yes, well, that's easier said than done, I'm afraid. He did two years as a medical student, and it seems to have left him with an aversion to the medical profession. Oh, perhaps a holiday might help. Yes. He's obviously been working too hard. Oh, thank you, Inspector. You've been most kind. Well, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know, Mrs. Leighton. Thank you. You can always find me at the station. You never told me all this before, Charles. Well, you'd moved over Epping Way about that time, Victor. We weren't seeing so much of each other. Oh, yes, of course. I had a few troubles of my own. Well, what happened to Leighton? Well, I didn't see him for six or seven weeks. I thought of phoning his wife to ask how he was. But I was pretty busy and kept putting it off. So you never knew whether he went to a doctor or not? Oh, yes, he did, but not for some time. Apparently, he insisted on finishing his latest book. And did he have another of those attacks? He certainly did. I had stayed late at the office one evening to check over some files that had come through from the CRO. I'm sorry, sir, but uh, Mr. Lightman says... Oh, that's all right, Smith. Oh, Melford, oh, thank God you're here. Oh, get him a chair, Sergeant. Uh, here you are, sir. Sit down, Mr. Layden. You look dead beat. Melford, I want you to put me under lock and key. Why? What's happened? I think I'm going out of my mind. I do. I really do. This morning, I, I had a terrible row with my wife about, about her dress allowance and, and money and that sort of thing. And then tonight, when I got back from town, I... <laughs> oh, go on, Mr. Layden. Do you know what I found, Inspector? Do you know what I found upstairs in one of the drawers? No, sir. I found 16 bills, 16 bills that hadn't been paid, Inspector. 823 pounds, four shillings and sixpence. You know, it's a great deal of money, Melford, a great deal of money. It is indeed. It's very naughty of Carol, very naughty. She, she's had the money, you know. I, I gave her the money weeks and weeks ago. Yes, well, perhaps if you have a quiet talk with Mrs. Layton. Well, I can't, not any longer. It's impossible. She's dead. Well, what do you mean? I mean, she's dead, Inspector. I've killed her, I've murdered her. When? Tonight, just now, just before I came here. Good heavens above, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Keep an eye on him, Sergeant. I'm going to my office. I shan't be two minutes. Yes, sir. Hello? Oh, is that Mrs. Layton? Yes, speaking. Uh, Inspector Melford here. Are you all right, Mrs. Layton? Well, yes, yes, of course. Is there any reason why I should... Your husband's here. Oh, I see. Has he been bothering you again? He said you'd had a quarrel about money and that he... he'd murdered you. Oh, really, Inspector? This is really getting too much. I do apologize. Well, as long as you're all right, don't worry, Mrs. Layton. But I do wish he'd see a doctor. He's terribly obstinate, Inspector. These delusions seem to be getting more and more frequent. Don't you get him away somewhere for a rest? I'm trying to get him to go down to St. Margaret's Bay for a week or two. My brother's got a place down there and he's offered to lend it to us. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yes. Well, actually, my brother's a doctor, a psychiatrist. But, of course, Felix wouldn't dream of consulting him. But I thought if, if Norman came down one weekend, he might possibly have a, have a quiet talk with Felix. Oh, that sounds to me like a very sensible arrangement, Mrs. Layton. Yes, I know. 
But as I told you, Felix is so very obstinate, Inspector. Would you like me to come down to the station now? No, 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 no. We'll bring Mr. Layden back in a police car. We'll park his own car in the station yard. You can uh, collect it any time. Oh, thank you, Inspector. I really am terribly grateful. No, not at all, Mrs. Layden. We'll be there in ten minutes. Pick up your coach, Mr. Layton. You're going home. Home? What, what do you mean? I've just been talking to your wife. But my wife's dead. I just told she you. She wasn't dead two minutes ago, sir. I was talking to her on the phone. <laughs> but that's nonsense. You couldn't possibly. Oh, you, you spoke to my housekeeper, Mrs. Lewis. She, she was obviously cu coming Mr. up to Mr. Layton, me. it so happens I've just finished reading your novel, The Second Alibi. The murdered man's housekeeper was called Mrs. Lewis. Oh. Oh, was she? I, I, I really don't remember. I, I thought perhaps... Mm. Tell Smith I want the car, Sergeant. Very good, sir. On the way back, he, he suddenly changed. He appeared to come to life, in fact. You mean he was suddenly quite normal? Oh, yes. He, he asked me what he was doing in the car and, and what he'd been saying at the station. It was just as if he'd been in some sort of a trance. Isn't that what the doctors call uh, obsessional deviation? Oh, is it? I wouldn't know. <laughs> anyway, go on, Charles. Well, Leighton did go down to St. Margaret's Bay and stayed there about three weeks. I met Mrs. Leighton just after they returned. She told me that her brother had convinced Felix that he was suffering from some sort of neurosis and that he persuaded him to have regular treatment. Did this treatment have any effect? Well, yes, at first I believe it did. The only trouble was, Leighton found it difficult to work and, and became rather restless. Yes, I can imagine that. His wife must have had a hell of a time. Yes. Anyway, after they'd been back from St. Margaret's Bay about a month, Lester Greenfield, you know, the uncle, disappeared. Mm -hmm. You probably remember the human cry. I required... remember it all right. There were all sorts of theories at first. One was that Greenfield had got on the shady side of the law. Another, that he'd been kidnapped. Yes, it was a good story for the newspaper boys. Yes. The Greenfield uh, had always been an enigmatic sort of character. A retired merchant banker living by himself. Hardly ever going out except to his bridge club. Yes, I remember. He failed to turn up at a tournament and the club secretary went round to see him. Yes, that was what started the hullabaloo. What about his staff? Well, he only had a housekeeper. All she knew was that he'd apparently gone out to the bridge club and never returned. He had no suspicious callers or messages. I see. Frankly, Victor, we were in a spot. And then one morning, an anonymous letter arrived telling us to search a certain pond on Melton Common. You searched the pond and found the body? Yes. And what about the will? Well, his housekeeper came in for a few thousands, so did one or two former employees. Felix Layton got the rest. Just over two million, if I remember rightly. No wonder he hasn't written any more books. Uh, did you check on Layton? Chief beneficiary, two million. Of course we checked on him. But I'm afraid Leighton rather took the wind out of my sails. In what way? He confessed. Confessed, you mean? He said he'd murdered the old boy. Well, I'm blowed. Can you beat that? What did you do, Charles? Oh, I argued with him, of course. There was nothing else I could do. And how did he react? Well, he became very annoyed. Very annoyed indeed. Melton, I keep telling you, I throttled the greedy old devil and threw the body into the pond. Do you want me to spell it out to you in words of one syllable? No, Mr. Layton, I just want you to go home, sir. You don't believe me? It isn't a question of not believing. You think it's like those other times? You think I'm unbalanced, don't you? But I'm not, you know. I, I've had a holiday. I've, I've had treatment. I'm as normal as you are, Inspector. I wish I could agree with you, sir. Look, Melford, who had a better motive for killing the old boy? Go on, tell me. Name one person who had a better motive. What was your motive, oh, sir? Don't be a fool. I'm up to my ears in debt and the old boy's left me two millions. I see. Damn it, you don't see. You're just being obstinate. Mr. Layden, it may surprise you to know that we've already had two people confess to the murder of your uncle. Damn their impertinence. Their claims will be fully investigated. And yours too, Mr. Layden. Sergeant, show this gentleman out. Very good, sir. Inspector, I consider this treatment quite unorthodox. You leave me with no alternative but to report this matter to a higher level. Just as you please, sir. I've got quite a few friends at the yard, and my uncle was very influential. I shall tell them quite frankly you're deliberately neglecting your duty. I shall make no bones about it, Inspector. No, sir. You haven't heard the end of this, Melford. Not by any means. Go this way, please, sir. I'm quite capable of seeing myself out. Thank you, Sergeant. 
Yes, sure. Is he round the bend? That's all right, Sergeant. I'll take him. Hello? Uh, Inspector Milford. Speaking. Oh, well, this is Carol Leighton, Inspector. Has my husband... He has. He's just left a moment ago. Oh, dear. Has he been making a nuisance of himself, Inspector? Well, he told me he'd murdered his uncle, Mrs. Leighton, if you call that making a nuisance of himself. He said he'd strangled him. Oh, no. Fortunately, the medical evidence doesn't support your husband's statement. Mr. Greenfield was clubbed to death with a heavy instrument. Oh. Yes, so am I, Mrs. Layton, because now I've got to waste valuable time investigating your husband's story. But surely you don't think that Felix... Where was Mr. Layton last Tuesday evening, the night of the murder? Tuesday? Oh, he was at my brother's place. Norman's persuaded Felix to have treatment... And what and time I... did he get back home? He, he didn't come home. He, he never does on a Tuesday. He stays the night with Norman and his wife. I see. And your brother's name, Mrs. Layton? Uh, Dr. Norman Crosby, 51 Harley Street. 51 Harley Street. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, Carol told me you might be dropping in to ask a few questions about Felix. Though I gather you know quite a bit already about those obsessions of his. What do you think started them, Doctor? Mm, worrying about his work. Trying to think out those complicated plots of his. Professional writers work under a pretty heavy strain these days, Inspector. Mm. Of course, it affects different people different ways. Sometimes it's ulcers, sometimes it's schizophrenia, sometimes it's just a plain persecution complex. You've had some experience of these cases, then? I have, indeed. Uh, when did it first start with Leighton? He was offered big money to write a novelized version of an American film. He worked round the clock, completed the book in five days. Soon after that, according to Carroll, he was firmly convinced that he'd pushed the local music teacher down a disused well. Oh, sounds almost comic if it wasn't so tragic. Yes, most of my cases are like that. You must hear some very interesting stories, Doctor. Yes, and some tragic ones, I'm afraid. Uh, just as a matter of routine, can you tell me where Leighton was on the night of the murder, Tuesday the 14th? He was here, of course. Oh. I thought Carol told you that. All the time? Yes. He arrived soon after seven... We had a longish session that night, until about half past nine. Then we had a light meal, listened to the radio, and went to bed. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your time. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Only too happy to have been of service. Uh, what's going to happen to Mr. Layton, Doctor? Will he get better? Well, he will if he does what I tell him, Inspector. I want him to go away for several months. A year, if necessary. Yes, that sounds like good advice to me. And I only hope he takes it. The trouble is, he's worried about his income tax. And I shouldn't say this, I suppose, but apparently he owes them over 10000 Well, that shouldn't worry him, not now, sir. No, I suppose not. This chap Greenfield left quite a bit of money, didn't he? Just about $2 million. Good Lord. I never realized it was as much as that. Yes, I think it is, sir. I, uh, I do wish you'd persuade Mr. Layton to go away, Doctor. I really do. <laughs> if you ask me, I don't think you're concerned about his health, Inspector. You just want to get him out of your hair. Well, wouldn't you, Doctor? He's already confessed the three murders he didn't do. And as soon as there's another murder, he'll be on our doorstep as sure as God made little apples. I'll see what I can do. Inspector. Then what happened, Charles, after you saw the Doctor? Nothing. So... You had to write the case off. Yes, we had to write it off. Victor, have you ever been to South Africa? No. I have. I was there this year. Go on, Charles. Tell me the rest of the story. I wanted to explore the possibility of starting up a new factory in Cape Town. So I hired a car and did some prospecting. Yeah. Well, after I examined two or three likely sites... I decided to take a look at the residential areas. There was one district, I, I forget the name now, lovely houses, very exclusive. And there was one house in particular, really beautiful. So beautiful, I, I asked the driver to stop so that I could take a good look at it. Mm -hmm. There was a lawn, a very pleasant lawn, leading up to a summer house. And on the lawn, I could see a little party in progress. An afternoon tea with the family silver and all the trimmings. Only four people, probably just the family. And then, suddenly, one of the men made a, a funny little gesture with his hand. A gesture that rang a bell. And I realized when I looked at him again that 
It was Felix Leighton. Leighton? Are you sure? Yes, for a moment. I, I thought it might be a case of mistaken identity. And then I recognized his wife, Carol. Good heavens, how extraordinary. I asked my driver who lived at the house. and He said it was a man called Paul Smith, a retired banker from London. Paul Smith? But why should Leighton change his name? Oh, I was just wondering about that when the other man walked towards the house and I was able to get a good view of him. It was undoubtedly Norman Crosby. You mean the doctor, Mrs. Leighton's brother? Yes, apparently he's retired and, curiously enough, he calls himself Jackson. Norman Jackson. He and his wife have a lovely place in Cape Town, not far from the Leighton's. Are you sure about all this? Oh, quite sure. So the four of them are living in the lap of luxury. That's right. On the money inherited by Felix. That's the picture. Two million pounds. I made a few inquiries about Paul Smith, alias our Mr. Leighton. And apparently he's very popular, thoroughly enjoys life, as fit as a fiddle. In fact, you wouldn't think there'd ever been anything the matter with him. You wouldn't think? What do you mean? Well, just what I say. You wouldn't think there'd ever been anything the matter with him. Heavens above, Charles, are you suggesting that those attacks of his were faked? Oh, no, I didn't That say it was that. all a build-up? No, I simply... That he was never ill? Now, wait a minute. I... Are you deliberately suggesting that the Greenfield murder was carefully planned by the four of them so that they could then... No, I'm not suggesting anything, Victor. I'm in the furniture business, old boy. You're the detective. What do you think? <laughs> 